Look at you two there. <laughs> you ever see people with uh, their Facebook profiles and it's a dog? Don't ever hire them. Don't ever hire them. You can be friends with them, but don't ever hire them. So guys, uh, Alberto Real here. I wanted to do a quick video because for years and years and years, I've been talking about, you gotta know your numbers, right? You got to know your numbers. Most business owners, most insurance people have no idea what their numbers are. They, they guess, they, uh, we talk to them all the time. Oh. But um, man, something as simple as important as cost of acquisition, and they just can't tell you. But there is one area in life where you should not know your numbers. Wow, son. Um, where you should not keep track and where you should not keep score. Have any idea where that is? Dude, I'm completely dark, huh? In relationships. In relationships, right? It just doesn't work. You should not know your numbers. So, fellas, ever had your wife or girlfriend ask you to do something nicely like, I don't know, hey, can you pick up Jenny at ballet practice? And you say something to the effect of, well, shit, I picked her up the last two times. That never works out well. It never works out well, right? So that is one very important area. I think it's more important than business. It comes first, right? Family, relationships. Um, relationship experts say this is one of the main causes of fights in marriage. One of the main things that starts on the road to divorce and as we get older and older and more complacent with our partner right it's a whole lot easier cleaning the kitchen or doing the dishes or watering or whatever it is fights little fights big fights break out because of these little things no 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 i did it last time you did it the last or i did it the last two times it's your turn you guys ever do that so this is one area you just forget the numbers and if anything there's a great saying if you can do more you must Sarah and I are about to celebrate our 10 year anniversary next month, September, 10 years. And um, while we practice this, I gotta tell you, we're not perfect. We're not perfect, but we are a lot better than we were 10 years ago when we started. And we're a lot more aware of it. And so as we start going down that path to start throwing at each other what we've done and why we deserve to not be the one going next, we're faster and faster at realizing it and stopping it stopping the fight before it starts. So that's all we gotta do is just be a little bit more aware of it. The reason I'm thinking about this is just recently, um, about the last couple of weeks, you know, I have one grandma left. We call her Tita. She's 94 years old, little feisty thing. She's like four eight, and man, I don't know what she weighs now. She's, she's uh, losing a lot of weight, but she's always been very tiny. Loves her tequila shots. She loves her straight up martinis. And it's amazing that, you know, 85 pounds and she can just pound them down. But she had two daughters. One is my mom, and, uh, and of course my mom's sister, my aunt. And so there's five grandkids. I'm the oldest of the five grandkids. And so as I kept hearing people that are kind of, you know, my mom taking care of her, my sister's helping out, taking care of a little bit, but she needs more and more care. And now she's at a point where she, she told my mom and her sister that, hey, it's time. I'm ready for God to take me. And so this should be a very, very, I mean, I think happy time, a time we should cherish, right? If it's somebody's last few days on earth before they get promoted to up there or whatever it is that you believe in. But this is one of those times where families get in fights. And I shared with my mom, I said, look, well, I'll, I'll talk to the cousins and brother and sister and, and uh, let's get her some 24 hour care. And it's amazing how all my family members knew their numbers. As I reached out to ask, um, I had several family members, we won't name them, but several, first thing is, right? Hey, I do this for her every week. Hey, I paid her utility bill two years ago. Hey, I get groceries. I do like all this keeping count stuff. And my first instinct was to come back and, and get involved in the drama. But I did, I caught myself before that happened. And so it became very obvious why families get in big fights at this time in life, when they're taking care of an elderly or loved one, and um, it usually has to do with money or expenses and that sort of thing. And so I feel very privileged that I get to help. And instead of getting into the knowing your numbers game and throwing back numbers around, I just said, hey, I'll take care of it 
and anybody that wants to contribute, great. Greatly appreciated. Whether it's $20 a week here, I'm gonna pay for it weekly, $20 a week, whatever you can. And if you can't contribute, no big deal. That's cool too. I'll take care of it, she'll be taken care of. And so it was my way of letting the other family members off the hook. But that right there could have turned into a major fight, into a major ordeal. And the person that needs the care, that deserves the care, that was always there for us, I ended up, I lived with my grandma for a couple of years when my grandfather died and I was like getting started in the insurance business at 20 years old. I called my first leads from her guest bedroom that she still lives in, a little two bedroom townhome on a little AT&T phone wired to the wall 25 years ago. It was from her house. She helped me out with a place to stay when I needed it. When I started in the business, I was broke, didn't have any money. And so I stayed with Tita. So um, it's pretty cool. It's a privilege that I can help out in that. It's also a privilege to have some of this knowledge and not let the situation rise into a big family fight. Instead, the person that deserves it, that needs it, will be getting care starting now, today. Today's Monday. And, um, and it's pretty cool to be in that. So when it comes to re your relationships, guys, again, wife, husband, forget the score. Do not know your numbers. I try to teach my kids the same thing. My kids, they're six and seven, excuse me, seven and eight. <laughs> they're going up so fast, seven and eight. And um, they're very good at keeping score, right? Clean up the dog poop, but why? Ryder, it's Ryder's turn and they whine and, and we are doing our best to share with them that they should not keep count. They should just help as much as they can. Do the most you can. If you can do more, you must. So when it comes to family, when it comes to relationships, husbands, wives, girlfriends, kids, if you can do more, just do more. Forget about the count. Forget about the numbers. Forget who did it last time. Just do it. And you will see it will be a much happier environment. And that's what we're all seeking anyway, right? And if you want to learn your numbers <laughs> in your insurance business, which gives you confidence when you know your numbers, the ability to invest more in your business and scale it and hire and knowing that you're going to have money to pay your people, click on the button right here. We'll show you. We have a step-by-step -step process. It's a formula on how to know your numbers to the penny, which gives you a lot of confidence. I get asked every week, how is it that you can spend, Albert, over $100,000 a month on Facebook advertising and still sleep like a baby? Well, I know my numbers. So the numbers are an exact science, right? They're very consistent, they're very predictable, and they give me confidence. I, I know them. I know the more money I put in, the more money, the more revenue we're gonna earn, the more people I can hire, the more people my message reaches, over 2.2 million in the last 30 days, pretty cool. So. You want to learn how to do that from somebody that has been doing it at a pretty high level i'll show you step by step our formula click on the button right here right now give us a little bit more information you can schedule a time with our team and i'll see you on the other side there's the dog